Thanks for joining us for Encore's film show. I'm Eve Jackson. Today, it's been named as one of the best films of the year. Damien Chazelle's bruising music thriller, Whiplash. Willem Dafoe stars as Pasolini, the celebrated Italian director who died in mysterious circumstances in 1975 in a film that could be Abel Ferrara's best yet. And some say he was the world's first international movie star. Frenchman Max Linder is back on DVD. For her take on that and more, France 24's film critic Lisa Nesselson is here. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. Season's greeting. Same to you. <laughs> now, let's kick off with an American film that's won some major awards, and it's also on lots of top ten best lists. It's called Whiplash. I'll ask you in a moment if it's a good film, but first of all, Clovis Casali reports. That night, Deauville's American Film Festival celebrated a new face in cinema. Damien Chazelle, a director who's only 29 years old. When I was petit, I came to Deauville with my family. My father is French, so maybe here now with a film and in a room like this, it's really bouleversant for me. Moving is also a word widely used to describe his film Whiplash. The story of a jazz prodigy pushed to his limits by a demanding professor at a top New York music school. The psychological pressure turns violent at times. I, I don't know. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will gut you like a... Mostly terror is belief that that's what it takes to, uh, to get the most, to get the best out of, uh, out of someone. You are a worthless, friendless piece of shit whose mommy left... Director Daddy. Damien Chazelle wrote from experience. As a teenager, he also had a tough music teacher. Are you a to play in this film, Chazelle picked someone who was an actor as well as a drummer. Both men knew exactly what kind of tormented environment they were portraying. Were your drumsticks covered in blood? Is that stuff real? And, and it was, so I think having, yeah, like I said, having a director that kind of came from that world, I think it just really, you know, gives it a like a full authenticity to it. I believe that is an absolute necessity. If Whiplash offers a look into this troubled relationship, it refrains from judging who's right or wrong. The question addressed in this film is rather, should one accept any type of violence and sacrifice to become the best? I wanted to make a war movie without guns, with, you know, without bombs, um, without a battlefield, and make the battlefield, make the weapons actually just uh, people's words, people's language, people's behavior to one another within a small space. Critically acclaimed, the film received 18 awards, including at Deauville and Sundance. Wouldn't be very nice to have a boss like that, would it, Lisa? <laughs> um, is the film as good as that everyone says? Uh, I, I absolutely recommend this movie without reservation. You know, writer-director Damien Chazelle says he structured his film like the story of an inspirational teacher-student relationship, except here the teacher, as you can see, is a sadistic, abusive, wildly inappropriate, controlling slave driver jerk for whom nothing, nothing is ever good enough. And so fireworks result. I, somebody described it as full metal jacket at Juilliard, and I think that's a pretty accurate description of what's going on. We know that this Fletcher is uh, being played by an actor, that he's two-dimensional on a screen, and you're still cringing in your seat thinking, oh, I hope he doesn't pick me out and start harassing me. And the director is half French and half English. Can we see that? in the film? I think we sort of can because one of the things that Fletcher says is that one of the m most useless damaging expressions in the English language is good job, good job. And something that Damien Chazelle noticed is that American kids are encouraged growing up for even the most feeble accomplishments. Oh honey, you washed your face, that's wonderful. And because people are afraid they'll scar their little psyches. But if you grow up and you're not a success, which means you're a failure, well in America we really, really hate failures. And so there's that flip side and he thinks in France, uh, people work hard and they get some encouragement, but it's on a more even keel, let us say. And you've lived in both worlds, which is the best one? <laughs> if there was a way to be in both at the same time, but I do think you get more positive feedback in America, odd as that seems. Yes, I think maybe I would agree. Now, moving on to Pasolini, directed by Abel Ferrara. Some are saying it's his best film. Now, it's about the final day in the life of the Italian poet, essayist and filmmaker. 
Tell us some more. Well, Pier Paolo Pasolini, when I heard that uh, Abel Ferrara was going to make this movie and that Willem Dafoe was going to play the part, I just sort of went, yes, because the, the physical resemblance is so extraordinary. Whereas Whiplash absolutely fulfills the mission it seeks out uh, to fulfill. Um, this movie is a little up and down, but uh, there are moments that absolutely shine, and Dafoe could not be better. And if you're thinking, where have I heard the name Abel Ferrara, that may be because he was very much in the news back in May for a movie called Welcome to New York in which Gerard Depardieu starred in a knockout performance as a man who is Dominique Strauss-Kahn in all but name. And uh, the real people were not happy about the film, but they weren't named like a certain supreme leader of a country that you would find to the north of South Korea, and so there was nothing they could do about that. Um, here is, uh, here is uh, part of the film. <laughs> in the ceremonial life of royalty is a widespread protocol of the bourgeoisie. He enters Pure chaos surrounded him. Two guys were killed just around the corner. The room is finished, my friend. The tragedy is there are no more human beings. There are only strange machines colliding into each other. Let me be frank with you. I've been to hell. And I know things that don't disturb other people's dreams. No, I, um, I interviewed Abel Ferrara once, and he, the whole, all the way through the interview, he kept saying things, and then at the end of it, saying, "You dig, you dig." <laughs> he's quite um, the character, isn't he? He is. He has this wonderful raspy delivery, and he's New York through and through. Interestingly, his last two films have been about real-life characters, but made with European money. This is where he's getting most of his support now. I had the privilege, challenge, interesting experience of moderating the Q and A with him last month for the Austrian premiere at the Vienna International Film Festival, and. Uh, here's part of what he had to say about why he finds Pasolini the man so inspiring. He was an activist on every level, you know, and um, he's talking about an individual. He's not talking in the plural sense of it. That one person can make a difference, and that's what I love about him. You know, he lived that. He didn't just talk that. What a voice, Abel Ferrara. Now let's uh, move on. What makes you say that, Eve? <laughs> you dig? Uh, I dig, Lisa. Now the work of two French geniuses is back on CD and DVD just in time for Christmas if you're looking for very last minute presents. Um, starting with Max Linder's work. He's sometimes referred to as the world's first international movie star. Tell us more. He may well have been because he created his persona back in 1906 when the movies were barely 10 years old. Uh, he was a comic innovator and Charlie Chaplin, who had a little bit of an ego, uh, went on the record as saying he looked up to Linder. From 1910 until the early 1920s, he was a star on a scale that's really hard hard for us to imagine now, from Paris to London to Barcelona to St. Petersburg to Sydney, and these were silent films. So Max Lender at one point went to America, where he made the three films that have been remastered for this box set, Seven Years Bad Luck from 1921, in which he originated the broken mirror pantomime that the Marx Brothers then swiped for duck soup. Let's watch. Such great pictures there. Now, Max Linder's life was actually quite like a movie, although maybe a little bit more dramatic, wasn't it? Well, especially the aftermath, because the fact that we even have these images to look at today is due to his daughter, Maud, who is now 90. She had no idea whose daughter she really was until she was an adult. Her brilliant father died in 1925. How did he die? In a murder-suicide when she was just 16 months old, so she never really knew him. He killed his wife and then himself, and Maud spent her whole life tracking down Lander's films. She directed a film about her father called the Man in the Silk Hat, which is very much worth seeking out. It's believed he made about 400 short films, and Maud, over the course of 70 years, has, rec has recovered 120 of them. Wow, an incredible story. Now, moving on to another famous French name, Francois Truffaut, known for strong stories in 400 Blows and Jules and Jim, which I re-watched um, last week, actually. The music <laughs> from his movies is now available on CD in time for Christmas. Now, how important 
was music in his films? It's, it's all in this little box, which is incredible to think about, but it was an absolutely integral part of all the movies he made. And uh, I can't, unless you really like just atonal music or heavy metal goth, I can't imagine anyone not loving this music. The absolutely brilliant Georges Delarue wrote and conducted the scores for Truffaut's first three films. You mentioned The 400 Blows, also Shoot the Piano Player and Jules and Jim. Other terrific composers such as Bernard Herrmann, he did the screechy violins and Psycho. Antoine Duhamel and Maurice Chaubert added immeasurably to other films. Now the first four discs are just played straight and the fifth one is really interesting. It's other people reinterpreting, in, reinterpreting, the, reinterpreting <laughs> the original material. I just reinterpreted the English language. <laughs> if you're in Paris for the, in, the, in the next month before uh, January 25th, the Cinémathèque Française has mounted a pretty good overview of Truffaut's life and career. He died 30 years ago but nearly all of his films have been remastered and re-released. They've been showing here in France for two months and uh, he's still a name that's recognized the world over no less a personage than President Francois Hollande recently went to the exhibit in the company of actor Jean-Pierre Léo and apparently he pronounced the show magnifique. Ah, magnifique <laughs> it is and this is our last magnifique cinema segment of the year Lisa any parting words for us? Uh, go to the movies go to the movies go to the movies and um, I'm uh, planning to take this fellow who's done some very good work in cinema recently uh, to see another film before the end of the year. Okay. All right, well, Merry Christmas, Paddington. Merry Christmas, Lisa. Merry Christmas to you at home. We're going to leave you now with one of the films of the season, The Penguins of Madagascar. Remember, our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. Enjoy, and Merry Christmas again to everyone. Well, Cuba's just like I remember it. When the world needs saving, it will take the most elite team on Earth. As elite, let's go. We're the elitest of the elite. Remain calm, penguins. You are now under the protection of the North Wind. We don't even know who the heck you are. The North Wind is an elite task force dedicated to helping dedicated to helping animals who can't help themselves.